You are in the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM and 1400. The Sportsocracy, we are heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app, seen everywhere on YouTube. Just go to thesportsocracy.com, click that live video link, subscribe to the channel, join us in the chat. You can also join the House of Reprehensibles. We encourage that as well. Just a nominal $2.99 a month fee to uh, show your support for the Sportsocracy here, but not required however subscription is required to get into the chat with us and all of the best comments that, that just of the keeps day. Uh, that, that keeps the bots at bay yes all of the best comments of the day get highlighted here in the sportsocracy it is uh, it's time to talk some free agency because well that's what we do here in the sportsocracy uh just before the draft miss season fully kicks in gear sorting out who did the best with what they had in free agency and Jeremy you're probably uh I guess you're if if the first hour was any indication you're probably going to disagree with me on on this one but I I mean I have the Carolina Panthers as a winner of this offseason so I don't I mean I have them as a net neutral I understand why you've done everything you've done I think your roster is better um but and, and i uh, I salute that Kevin Vick in the YouTube comments said, I'm not used to my team actually making moves in free agency. I, I get it. I don't dislike anything you've done. I think it's a little short-sighted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I'm, as I said, in green on green, I'm a value guy. I, I look at I look at certain signings that I'm a big fan of. I look at others that I'm not as big a fan of. And it almost always comes down to either draft pick compensation or money. So maybe I'm a little biased being the draft guy. Mm-hmm. So it, it, I said all of my contentions with Carolina. You feel free to say why you think it's wonderful. Well, I mean, I just feel like this team's gotten better. I mean, you you lost DJ Moore. Okay, that's that's going to sting a little bit. All right, so just – But you're putting yourself in a position to be better for the future. You weren't going to be in this position holding on to DJ Moore. I don't believe. I don't I don't believe there's a way that you get the deal done to get the number one pick and not give up DJ Moore. You decided that's what you had to do to get your quarterback of the future, and I don't disagree with you. Cause I feel like if they were gonna go like this, they they put that all star cast together as in the coaching staff, and then you were gonna go out and you were gonna make some key additions in free agency, this is a better team than they were last year. Okay, so, so, so I let me don't ask see you, you picking in the top ten again next year. Okay, so let me ask you a question. What does this roster right now do better than last year's team did? Think about the team that went into the season. Mm-hmm. Do you run the ball better? Mm-hmm. Oh, good God, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, good God, no. Mm-hmm. You had Christian McCaffrey and Deontay Foreman. I could argue both of them are better than any running back on this roster. Better than Miles Sanders. Look, I like Miles. I've always liked Miles, and I'm projecting here. I've seen Deontay Foreman have better games than Miles Sanders did. Mm-hmm. Just this, facts don't care about your feelings. Mm-hmm. That's just true. I think Miles Sanders is a more talented player. He's not more talented than Christian McCaffrey. That's no. what you went into last year with. Yeah. All right. Uh, are your weapons better? Looking at what's on the outside right now, is that better than what you had last year with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson? No. No. The offensive line is the same. It's the same five players, so mm-hmm. that's kind of hard to argue on. Mm-hmm. Which I th- I felt like was an important key. I, I did, too. They showed improvement down the stretch of last year, so keep the band together. Uh, it, it, Kevin Vick said tight end. I, I'll agree with you there. Tight end, 100%. And, and that's, Not even close. And that's because you signed a living, breathing one, and that helps. Right. So, no, we don't have to deal with this Ian Thomas myth anymore. And then defensively, are you are, are you significantly better or about the same? About the same. There you go. All right, th- this was not a good team last year. I don't know where that myth's coming from. No. A- and now you're going to throw a rookie into this with everything you do offensively being worse. That's where my problem is. I hate that you put DJ Moore in this deal. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Hated it the second I saw it because I knew how hard it was going to be to replace. Not that you couldn't draft another rookie. It's just how many – this kind of goes back to my dating record. How many threes do you have to have to make you feel good that you actually have the one? It's where Carolina's at. You you got a whole mess of threes. And, and I think part of the question here is also do 
do we need to be good right now? That's now. That's because, I'm glad you said that that way. Because DJ Moore obviously would have – you would have been a better team had DJ Moore been on this team. No doubt. Okay, he was under contract for, what, two more years? Something like that. So you that. got a window there, and you're going to have to pay him in two years. Well, you were already paying him. Do you he really, was already expensive, and you ate a ton of dead money. Do you really want to keep doing this with DJ Moore? Or do you want to scrub it now, get the quarterback in there, get some trusted targets, and let's let's see how he develops? Now, no smiles in our YouTube comments. Said, get your quarterback, worry about the rest later. Now that's where I wanted to go here. If there is a quarterback that you think is an elite franchise guy, and that is why you moved up here, okay. You think there's a guy, your scouting department is telling you this is the guy, stop telling me there's two. Mm -hmm. Stop doing that. Because you're swaying how I'm thinking about this. You didn't give this up for, well, there's a, there's a few that we feel good about. Stop that. Go get your guy, and if you got the guy, then I'm wrong. Because if you get your guy for the next 10 years, there's no price that is too expensive to pay. Here's what I will tell you. In the history of trading up for the number one pick, it has almost never worked. And the reason is because you give up so much draft capital to get What's up What's the there. best one? Jared Goff. Okay. That's the best it's That's ever been. That's the best. Okay. In terms of moving up to get a – I mean, somebody would argue with me about Michael Vick, I'm sure, but – I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. It's kind of like the Pete Rose thing. I just it makes my head hurt, and I don't want to. Right. So, yeah, for me, Carolina is not the big winner of the off season. And for me, there is a big winner, and they are one, two, and four. Detroit Lions. No, Detroit would probably be three. Really. This is going to hurt me to say, and some of you, I, I need you to prep for this. Don't don't accidentally wreck your car or anything like that because of what I'm getting ready to say. It's the Dallas Cowboys, and it's not even close. What? It's the Dallas Cowboys, and it's not even close. For why? You added two integral parts to your team. I needed a number one corner to put Trayvon Diggs where he was supposed to be because mm -hmm. he's a legit, high-end, fantastic ball hawk, too. I got that. I got that Stephon Gilmore. I needed another field stretcher. That wasn't me paying Odell Beckham Jr. some astronomically stupid amount of money. I got that in Brandon Cooks for a, a bag of footballs. Mm -hmm. a, a five and a six. Mm -hmm. You win. Period. Name me a team in the NFL that added more talent to an already good roster than the Dallas Cowboys. I'll ask it another way. Tell me the team that you feel better about. Not win-loss record or anything like that. Because the Cowboys won a lot of games last year that you feel better about their roster right now compared to how you felt last year than the Dallas Cowboys? Detroit Lions. <laughs> it's just the secondary. I mean, and, and there's not really a – there's not an A guy there outside of Chauncey Gardner-Johnson who's just a move piece. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to denigrate that. They did a great job. But I don't feel better about them than I did the Cowboys. I'll be honest with you, I felt, I felt better about the Lions – Solely because the team's a year older. This is one of the youngest teams in the NFL. And you didn't have Jamison Williams for half the year. I, I I like a lot of what the Lions have done. But I feel better about the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. And it feels weird for me to hear those words coming out of my mouth. Okay. What's the we we didn't put we didn't put a grade on the Panthers. What's 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 your grade? C. C. They're a legit C for me. Okay. I wanted to give them an incomplete because I still don't know who the quarterback you moved up to get is. Mm-hmm. If it's Bryce Young, I'm probably going to take that down to a C minus, even though I like him better as a long term prospect. If it's CJ Stroud, I'll probably push it up to a C plus. And if it's Anthony Richardson, it's that grade becomes uh, something I can't say on the show without being <laughs> fined by the FCC. It comes, a, it becomes a Gary Busey. Oh, you know we hadn't done that in forever. Yeah. Oh, we hadn't done that in a long time. Ooh, it's a toy I hadn't used in a while. <laughs> Yeah, that would become full Gary Busey at that okay. point. All right, all right. I've, I, I mean, it's, it's useless for me to give out letter grades because I grade on a curve. Oh yeah, like everybody. And you would have been the greatest professor ever. Everybody gets no worse than a C. Indeed. What about the guy that dropped the class? C. C minus. He didn't show up past the first day. D plus. <laughs> Nobody fails. Nope. Nobody fails. All right. So Dallas Cowboys. A plus. 
A plus. A plus. Didn't hurt yourself against the cap. You made the best use of what you had. Now, do I love the fact that you gave up the same amount for Brandon Cooks that you did for uh, that you got back for Amari Cooper? No, I don't. Uh, you're also not paying Brandon Cooks mm -hmm. the, the way that you would have been paying Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. uh, and I look, I think he's a good player. He also has now tied the NFL record for most times being traded, and he's 28 years old. So that bothers me and always has, uh, but he's a very good player. I give Dallas its flowers, too, as well, for the, the, the Tony Pollard signing was was something that they had to do. The Ezekiel Elliott come to Jesus meeting has apparently happened, and you you know thank your lucky stars for that. So, yeah, Dallas is up there. Get an A plus from Floster Thomas, Jeremy Green. Do you have any other A's? A's? I mean, Detroit. Oh, I should have. I should have been cautious with how I said. That. So on tank scale, do you have any A plus 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 pluses <laughs> that you just feel like are better than everybody else? I feel like Detroit's better than everybody. They're my A okay, number so one. Okay, so move off Detroit. Anybody yeah. else? I've, I've I've heard your your flowers on Detroit. Anybody beyond that? Yeah, not real. I mean, there were good signings, but not as a not as like as a whole. Super high marks for their entire free agency class. The it, Broncos d d would be close, maybe. Okay, that's one I was shocked you had not said. I feel like Denver went into this and, and did exactly what they needed to do to add pieces to make chicken salad out of the uh, chicken excrement that, that you were handed with, with Russell Wilson. Right. You went out and you you know, you know you, you spent big. You got Mike McGlinchey. You got Ben Powers. The right side of your line is now ginormous. Mm -hmm. You organ, you know reorganized the offensive line. You got Zach Allen, who's a threat on the defensive I love line. that signing so much. That's one that nobody will talk about. I love that so much. The 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 only thing that they did that I'd kind of go, I, I don't really get, was the Samaje Piran thing, but it's not like they paid way too much for him. No, he's a valuable back. He showed that in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I don't ever love paying – I don't ever love paying running backs. But right, it's like three and a half million dollars. Yeah, felt like it was a little bit much for me, but it, better it's running fine. back right now, David Montgomery or Samaj P. Ryan. I think it's close. I think it's Samaj P. Ryan, and I don't. You think really it's all do? That I do. Okay, just because the, of the his more pass I've watched David abilities. Montgomery, the more I think. Did he actually die at some point? And because his tape is god awful, I mean, genuinely hard to watch at times. Mm-hmm. That's another reason that I kind of I kind of bang on Detroit is I'm look okay you had Jamal Williams who fit this scheme perfectly, and you're trying you're trying to get happier than happy. And they're going to expect him to do the same thing. Yeah, and I think that's that may be a bit of a fool's errand. And hopefully he'll be uh, you know he 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 will be that durable piece when DeAndre Swift mix, misses six games next year. Denver was an A minus. They were an A minus to a B plus somewhere in that realm because you did pay top dollar for every person you signed okay uh, i even like jared stidham bringing him in as the backup because that gives you a little bit of leverage of hey i gotta get started games in this league mm -hmm. russ if you're not on board and you don't want to play this game uh, with, with sean payton great I, I got somebody that i can at least yeah move on with I, because I, davis I mean, webb knows him so well i i don't feel like that's a threat to russell wilson really it's more but... of a threat than brett rippon was sure and that, that's what I needed. I need somebody that I could at least sell. I, I need a, a backboard because of how bad Russell was. Mm -hmm. There's a team you haven't said yet, and, and we got to take a commercial break. After the commercial, there's a, a, another team that I think has absolutely killed free agency, and I don't hear anybody say it, and I'm not sure I understand why. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. This is your time saver. The Sportsocracy. These guys are a f***ing disgrace. ESPN Asheville, this is the Sportsocracy. And free agency is, uh, well, I mean, all the, the, the major headlines are, are gone, right? I, I uh, mean, yeah, there's not a, I mean, outside of Lamar Jackson. Which, right. You got Lamar. If, if anything were to happen there, it's going to take a minute. You got Aaron Rodgers. And then everything else is, uh, well, oh, that guy's still out oh, there. Oh, that's, uh, that's a special team, Zays. Let's go. <laughs> We're talking about the winners and the losers, giving out uh, free agency grades here. And Denver Broncos, we ended on them. Dude, what was your grade? I would go B 
plus. B plus for the oh, Denver Broncos. Denver. All right. But there's a team that nobody talks about, and I can't figure out why. Okay. It's the Cincinnati Bengals. Ooh, You've okay. needed a left tackle for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. But now Jonah Williams wants a trade. Well, I wanted a date with the Spice Girls from about 1993 until <laughs> yesterday. You don't always get what you want. Yeah. And I even, let's say they do trade him. You, you do realize what he's going to command back, right? Probably to be a right tackle, not a left. But I could easily see a team giving up a, a day two pick for him. Mm -hmm. Late second, early third, and then another conditional pick. I mean, he's still a young guy. And it's not like you're going to be crushed up against it. There's, I, I can't remember exactly how the trade would look. But I think it's straight cap savings if they were to move on from him. And the deal you got for Orlando Brown was just incredible. You paid me. less money to Orlando Brown than the Chicago, than the Kansas City Chiefs paid to Jawan Taylor. Right. If I say that every day for the rest of my life, I don't think I'm going to make it make sense. Four years, $64 million was a song for Orlando Brown, and you, you, you found a way to bring back Jermaine Pratt. Yeah, that's and that for me that's another side of this it, is that cincinnati did exactly what i wanted them to do you hit your number one need now you go into a draft that is real rich with tight ends and that's your biggest need on the board to me mm -hmm. will some knock them because they lost out on uh, jesse bates maybe. i don't think you should a because safety is not that hard of a position to to replenish they've done a pretty good job drafting over the last few years and i mean <sighs> Jesse Bates was worth the money to me with Atlanta because Atlanta doesn't have a ton of players that are command are going to command high end contracts. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati does does you're right. <laughs> I it's, mean to put it nicely, Cincinnati's about to get really expensive, right. so they're you're going to lose guys. Sorry, right. it's just the way it works. Right, you got three guys that are getting ready to get primo contracts at their positions. So between T Higgins and Jamar Chase, and of course Joe Burrow getting ready to get his half a billion plus. Now I, I I feel like this is going to be one of those times that I'm going to say a name, and mm -hmm. you think, oh, Jeremy's saying nice things. Maybe he's progressed. And then there's going to be a, yeah, but. Oh, no. The Chicago Bears. Okay, what? Is, tell us your good things about the Chicago Bears. Well, I mean, you absolutely annihilated the Panthers, I think, in that trade down. You may still get the, uh, Jalen Carter. You may still get a high-end prospect. I think you really did a nice job with your linebackers with Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards. Mm -hmm. Let's take what you paid them off. You had a bajillion dollars. I'm not that worried about it. I like the Nate Davis edition. I like the Demarcus Walker edition, and I love that you got DJ Moore in the deal with with uh, Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's all the nice things. Now, if one more Chicago Bear fan goes back to something I said three months ago and goes, that aged well, I swear to you, I am going to send the most profound fanity laden tirade you've ever seen in your life i don't know what makes you think that all of a sudden this just makes you good you what you did so you're i, I think they've spent 70 million dollars in cap space what you did adding all of these players got your roster to an nfl caliber i didn't say not nary a word about good you're now like with the the well, you, were, you were with the Texans to begin with. Now you're like to that Arizona Cardinals level. Okay, it's an NFL team. I still hate your quarterback, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna hate your quarterback until he proves me wrong, and I don't think he's going to. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, the way you staggered the the trade compensation tells me that they know that too. I got a one next year and a two the following year. Ask yourself this question. If Ryan Poles didn't have just a ton of, uh, of latitude with the Chicago Bears, would one of the bigger pieces of your trade package not been two years down the line? If he thought, oh, yeah, this Justin Fields thing better work. Or, oh, I added a day two pick two years from now, mm -hmm. which means I think I'm going to be here, and they're telling me I'm going to be here, which means we're going to do all these things for Justin Fields, if it craters into the rocks, we'll be one of the eighth, eight worst teams in the NFL next year anyway. Mm -hmm. We think that first-round pick from Carolina is going to come in the top 10 to 13. So now i got two th top 13 picks. I can go get anybody I want. Because one of these bad teams will have taken a quarterback this year, 
and I can go get Caleb Williams, Drake May, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is brilliant. That is a brilliant stroke of engineering for Ryan Poles to make chicken salad out of chicken excrement. Because he got handed a quarterback that he didn't draft. Mm Mm-hmm. That they gave up an extra first round pick to go get. You recouped that because the Houston Texans beat the Indianapolis Colts. Nothing you did. And you took that value and you turned it into something tangible for your future. That's an A. The Chicago Bears, even if none of these signings work, you gave yourself a trap door. Of the Justin Fields thing doesn't work out, you have no excuses now. The line's better, the receiving core's better, the defense is better. You have no excuses now. You come out and go 58% completion percentage guy next year, uh, LMNO bye-bye. And I think it's brilliant. I, I really do. I think Ryan Poles has done a phenomenal job with this roster. Phenomenal. Okay. And not because I think it's all that good. But, but what? But from where you went, from mm-hmm. what you started with to where you're at mm-hmm. now, you feel like they did a great job. Your talent base is much better. You now can legitimately see what you have in Justin Fields, which I think is going to be very little. Uh, A year from now, there will be a desperate team that will give you something for him, and you can go get your quarterback of the future. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out. If it does work out, then I'll be here the same way I was with Jalen Hurts, saying, I was wrong. Yeah. Here, let me num-num on my crow. I just eat all of it out of a pan. Can't wait till Atlanta's back on that that watch list. of Hey, maybe maybe we should get Justin Fields. Maybe we should have a quarterback. All right, um, Philadelphia Eagles, they have to be on the plus side here. Theirs is brilliant because they stayed on the right side of the compensation formula because they've re-signed all of their guys. There are no free agent additions, so that doesn't count. I kept my guys. I lose Javon Hargrave, who I'm going to get a third-round pick for. Mm-hmm. Lost Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who I'm probably going to get a third-round pick for, which, by the way, is what you gave up for him in the first place. Smart teams. Mm-hmm. Smart teams do smart things. Held on to Darius Slay. Which is still weird to me. Held on we're, to James We're cutting Bradbury. Darius Slay. Oh, by the way, the printer was broken, and we changed our minds overnight. Fletcher Cox still in the building. Brandon Graham still in the building. I got to give you your flowers for keeping the band together as much as you did. Mm-hmm. Were you going to lose some pieces? Yeah, but you you also made sure that this is, you know, still a Super Bowl contending team next year bob brown in the youtube comment said the eagles are a b i would have said they were a b until i still started looking at the contracts going all of your commitments are in the next two years mm-hmm. there's nothing that extends past that no and that's how i got them to a b plus you can reset the decks you can reset the decks in a couple of years and let uh you know what's his name howie roseman continue to do what he does he already tore this thing quote unquote tore it down once it wasn't really a full tear down, but you see where they at, where, where they're at. They were in cap hell three years ago, and now they were just in a Super Bowl and looking looking to threaten for a second Super Bowl p- appearance this coming year. Then I had three Bs. These okay. are just very solid. I like what you did. I, I don't necessarily think you signed anybody that's greatly impactful, but for different reasons. The Seattle Seahawks, mm-hmm. you took – all of the needs off the board. So you added all of the things that you needed, and now you are not, I have to get an interior guy. I have to get an edge. I have to get a linebacker. I just go get the best player. Mm-hmm. I got gifted an extra first-round pick here for a, a, a quarterback. Uh, let's just be honest, is not really good. And I wound up in a trade, the greatest trade heist in NFL history, and now I can just take the best player on the board. So for me, that's a solid B from Seattle. I don't necessarily love any of these players, but I think they can be nice rotational pieces. Any uh, chance of a reclamation for Devin Bush in Seattle? I always hated his fit in Pittsburgh. I, I hated it. For, if you remember, that was the first draft we ever did. And the minute they drafted him, I went, you're not going to love that you just did that because he's Whittle. So could he have that in Seattle? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily count on it. I just, there's a possibility of it. Okay. Uh, the Washington Commanders. I think they're a solid B because now I can go into the first round at 16 and take the best player on board. I added the lineman. Uh, I added a corner. Again, same. A B for me basically means I can now go into the draft and just get the best player available. There, there's no aggressive need. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one's the Miami Dolphins. David Long is still my favorite signing of the offseason. 
you got one of the best off ball three four linebackers in the league for five and a half million dollars. Plus, you added Jalen Ramsey in a trade. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, yeah, just, I was gonna say you gotta. Uh, yeah, I buried I mean, the you lead don't have there. to love that one, but you gotta like that. Uh, and you also got uh, Mike White, which is the future <laughs> the of future. your franchise. Eight million dollars a year. Uh, I, I I got I just got one more that I feel like I feel like they've done pretty well in the off season. It's the Minnesota Vikings. See, I'm not as wild about that one. They cut loose uh, Adam Thielen. I get the Carolina Panthers paid him too much, but you know, it is what it is. Adding Marcus Davenport, re-signing Garrett Bradbury, who's not as bad as some people want to make him out to be. Byron Murphy, I thought, was in a, a good addition to the secondary. And I'm going to say the same thing about Minnesota that I've said about Carolina. I feel like you paid 130% for every player you added. And I'm not sure that you're in better shape at any of these positions. Who were the losers of free agency so far? We'll talk about them up next here in the Sportsocracy. Uh, I have free agency period has gone pretty well for some teams. We talked about those at the uh, top half of this hour. And now it's time to talk about the ones that it hasn't gone all that well for. I mean, they think they're out here doing stuff. But I've but always looked really? at teams that wind up on this list going, how did you walk away? You set up the the – the the off season playing and this is what you came away with uh, who's your biggest loser i'm just, several of mine i'm gonna get accused of being a homer so i'd see it coming uh mine's the las vegas raiders okay that was one of mine to me they are the overall loser and it's and it it's not really that i hate all of their players it's just because i I don't like this team, and I don't like their coach. One of the saving graces for this team was Derek Carr, and you got rid of him for why I still am not real clear on, and then you brought in Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Myers. I, now, I like the Jacoby Myers thing. I hate it. I don't know because why. He, because here's why. Where did Josh McDaniels come from? New England. What does every New England disciple try to do when they go to a new place? To recreate New England. But I feel like Jacoby Myers doesn't fall into that. That's the one signing nah. they made that I don't that I don't mind. Yeah. I, I feel like Marcus Epps was the worst player on that Philadelphia defense, and you went, <laughs> "Hey, he was on a good team. Let's bring him here for a mess of money." Uh, Robert Spillane. Four million dollars. Th That's four dollars was too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you had given him the change out of your pocket, you did it wrong. Uh, it's just it, hot. So, the, the shocker, the Patriots guy brings in Patriots guys, and guess what's going to happen? In a year, maybe two years, he's going to be on the unemployment line. Oh, no doubt. Uh, no doubt about it. I, just, I, just, I cannot, for the life I of me, do figure it, out. I wouldn't do it for the optics. Just for the optics. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how a group of people looked around and went, Derek Carr is our problem. And then they looked at Jimmy Garoppolo and went, that's the solution. Have you ever seen that meme of the old man wearing the red striped shirt and he holds up his Christmas present and it is the exact same red striped shirt? I feel like that's what Josh McDaniels and, and this entire brain trust have been doing all offseason long. Look, we fixed it. It's, it's the same thing. It's the, it's the thing. exact same thing. That was not my biggest loser. And I know I'm going to catch some flack for this because I'm always accused of being a homer. Mm -hmm. So the New England Patriots is not really all that close. Really? What move do you feel good about? What did New England has done? All right, so just let, let me walk you through this. You had offensive line problems. So you let Isaiah win. He goes off in the sunset. You signed Calvin Anderson and Riley Reef, two guys that couldn't, uh, one that couldn't play for the Bears, a and you just feel like, do you feel good? Are you looking around now going, that's done. Juju Smith-Schuster, who has regressed every single year he's been in the league. I mean, he was fine-ish in Kansas City, but do you look at him in this offense and go, ah, that fixed it? No. Uh, I re-referenced the same thing I said about Josh McDaniels. Uh Hey, we let Jacoby Myers go. Cool. We got him on Wish. And his name is Juju Smith-Schuster. He is a TikTok. He dances on it. 
First of all, the thought of Juju Smith-Schuster and Bill Belichick being in the same room makes me so happy. I cannot wait for the first time he does a TikTok on the field and Bill's brain just goes poof. A little personality conflict. Uh, Bill's, Bill's angry in our YouTube comments. I mean, do you feel good right now? Honestly, j- just take the, take the fact that I'm a Jets fan away from it. Do you really look at this and go, oh, yeah, we do. we're doing stuff? Jonathan Jones was a good re- retention. Don't disagree. So That was your own guy. Plus. I'm talking about the guys you brought in. All right, so it, it, first of all, Bill's obsession with tight ends is just dumbfounding to mm-hmm. me. In the best tight end draft we've had in my lifetime, you went, no, no, let's go give $9 million to Mike Gesicki, he wasn't, it, who has the same problem in New England he had in Miami. I say he wasn't going to draft one high, and the last time he drafted two two guys in the fourth round, everybody thought he was high. So, of course, he's not, he's not in it for the uh, tight end draft stock. I just – I'm – I, I don't get it. I, I just I don't get it. Running a lot of twelve personnel with Mike Gesicki and Hunter Henry, two tight ends that fun. can't block. It's awesome. gonna be so much fun. And you added James Robinson, just another of if you ever thought it, it, there was ever going to be a fantasy relevant New England running back, they're never going to give you that. I just all right. If you're calling me a homer, and I'm seeing several people in the chat are that. Oh, the Jets win the draft again, and New England loses free agency, and the Jets get swept. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, Aaron Rodgers with the Jets against this Patriots roster. You're really telling me that you think that's better. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you do, that's fine, but I'm going to need the explanation. I, I don't understand how you look at this and go, yeah. We're, we're, no, you're in the exact same boat you were in last year. You're 7 and 10, 8. I'll put it this way. Without knowing what they do in the draft, because frankly, I don't care. I will bet you anything you want, anything to a charity of your choosing, that you go 7-10, and 8-9, and nine, or 9-8. Nine and eight. I won't even go worse, because I don't think you're worse than that. You're going to hit one of those three things for the third year in a row. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So you're the ninth best team in the AFC. Why do I care? Why do I care? Oh, wait, that's right. I don't. And you're the worst team in your division. It's not even kind of close. Mm-hmm. But we'll sweep the Jets. Okay. That and a dollar will get you a Coke. Or a cookie, depending on which part of the meal you're trying to. <laughs> All right, other losers. Go ahead and say it. Oh, it's your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I can't figure that out to save my life. Uh, what? What the plan is? Uh, the plan is that there is no plan. We don't know. What, we don't know. Like, I can't. The thing with you that I don't understand, you, so you let the you, you re-signed the better corner mm-hmm. at the top of his market mm-hmm. and you let a Sean Murphy Bunting go for it's a bag same, of football. It's the same thing they did last year with Jordan Whitehead. I, I just like I don't Jordan get it. Jordan Whitehead was a good player for this team. You let him walk out the door to the New York Jets for the same one same amount of money, wasn't it? Four million dollars. Yep. Can I say something about Tampa Bay and and you tell me if I'm wrong? Okay. Uh, because I'm I'm trying to be as objective as I can here. I feel like Tom Brady was a great big band aid on one of the dumber organizations in this league. Absolutely. And if you take Tom out, I could do the same thing with New England. But you know what? I've I've already I've already gone to that. But <laughs> I feel like if you take the Tom thing out, this is really probably the worst run organization in the NFL. Exactly. That's why it made the most sense in the world for it to be Tom Brady. Or to go to to do the deal with Tom Brady, you needed to be relevant for once, and you and they gave and he gave you that. Mm-hmm. You had you had a nice little team that had a, a few weapons on it. He wanted to come. It made all the sense in the world. We knew how this was going to go. We knew this was going to be two, maybe three years of relevancy, and then it's going to go right back to being Tampa Bay Buccaneers football, where you suck year in mm-hmm. and year out. You're just you're destined to do that. This offseason, I don't I, I I threw my hands up at the trade deadline and said, just trade everybody. Jason Light just needs to get what he can out of these guys and move on and rebuild into something. And you didn't do that in the offseason. You went and spent, spent big on Jamel Dean. You brought Levante David back, and I get that's the like the heritage move. 
awesome. Maybe he'll stay here and be a buck forever. Well, but at I this mean, point, and, you're and, just setting money on fire. Well, and, and I don't. This is going to sound like I'm speaking out both sides of my mouth, and I'm really, I'm, I'm really not. I, I don't so much care about the money. I care about the end result. You can spend every dollar your owner has ever had if you're getting somewhere. I guess that's the the problem that I have with every one of these teams I've said. Are you significantly better right now than you were when you started? No. I'm okay with that if you got younger. Uh, Bill Budacek asked, what have the Jets done this offseason that makes you feel better? Nothing. They got a year older. That's it. But, and that's my point. I'm a draft guy. So I look at a young roster that gets a year better. I'm looking at all these teams that I have just said, going, you didn't get younger. You got more expensive. And I don't think you got any better. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's the same eight to ten teams that we do this with every single year. And the outcome tends to be very much the same. Yep. Uh, also, of course, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers famously giving Baker Mayfield, you know, $3.9 million more than he was worth. Uh, and we will have a uh, Let's Bake uh, framed Twitter from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that's in the studio by the end of the week. You're in the Sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville.